Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Fabrication 101. Today, we're going to be building a shelf, but the main focus is just going to be this angle iron frame. Uh, angle iron and square tubing, like one inch, inch and a half, somewhere around there, are the two most common types of materials that I build with. Uh, they're so versatile. I use them for not just fixtures and jigs and things like that, but I also use them on finished products as gussets, brackets, um, support pieces. I mean, you can use it for just about anything. Uh, so anyways, the main focus of this is going to be on making an angle iron frame like this with um, mitered cuts, and I'm going to show you coked cuts and... Um, little tips and stuff that should make it a lot easier cutting and uh, welding these out. So before we get started, I think that I'm going to make this probably two or three episodes long because they've been getting pretty long, like 16, 20 minutes long, and um, I don't have enough room in my phone to store all of that all at once, so I end up deleting a bunch of like little clips where... I'm showing like uh, little details um, and that's not what I want. What I want for this is showing all those little details. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start making um, two or three episodes longer and shorter episodes. And that'll make, it'll make it easier on me because then I'm not having to trim and cut a whole bunch of stuff out that could probably help some of you. Anyways. Uh, sit back and enjoy this episode. So another important thing to uh, keep in mind is when you're clamping down your work in your vise, it has to be oriented so that it's not going to uh, spin on you when the saw comes down. So if it's clamped like this, I just barely got it snug, and that blade's going to be pulling this way, this won't spin. But if I spin it 90, clamp it down, that just comes straight out. But if I clamp it down this way, snug it down, that's not going anywhere because it's pushing back on this side. If we go another 90, snug it down, that's going to twist. And all those, or both those ways that twist are going to bind up and break your blade. So you've got to remember that you can't use those ways unless you have a secret weapon. A secret weapon, just a piece of square stuff that fits in there, and it'll uh, be just a little bit wider than this piece. So, this way it twists. Put this guy down. Snug him up just barely. Now it's not going nowhere. And I'll use this even on the other ways if I've got a longer leg piece on my angle iron or if I'm using aluminum because it's going to only chatter and um, shake if you don't have one of those pieces in close to your cut point. different about angle iron than square tubing or round tubing or all the other ones is you can't just after each cut just rotate it and use it as um, as you would with square because you can just flip it to the outside but since this is cut long on this side you can't use it you've got to cut that off and I've seen lots and lots of people and I've probably even done it they just so used to using square or round tubing that they just spin it 180 degrees and start cutting. But with angle iron, you've got to hack that off. So the angle on this has been made by coping the angle iron. Uh, you can see it's a straight cut, straight and straight, and it's pretty easy to do. And if you think about it, this joint would make or will make a stronger joint than just a 45 mitered because that 45 has just one straight linear line for that uh, crack to follow. This one, the crack would have to go 
and weave its way through all of them and there's three planes for it to do it whereas there's just one with the um or two with the 45. to cope this there's a couple ways you can cope them but basically there's the way where you go edge to edge like that or you can go corner to corner and leave that open uh spot right there for some weld to fill it in and then you can round it and have a real smooth corner and uh, not lose your strength as you would from that so to do that all you got to do is either use one of these or have some type of square and then you're gonna line it up to where it's corner to corner or edge to edge whatever you like but it has to be 90 and then you're just gonna mark it with a scribe And all you're going to have to do is run it through a bandsaw or a cutoff wheel down there and then straight across that way. And now you got a nice little 90. And you can weld all this up or just on the other side. And that's a cope joint. The other way to do it is basically just your 45 miter. All you gotta do is since it's a 90 degree corner, divide that by two, you get 45. So you put 45s on each side. And a big, big mistake that I see people do all the time um, is they'll do 45, 45, and then they'll go to put a straight piece in. But if you look, that ain't gonna line up. Every angle you put puts a longer, um, uh, I don't know what it'd be called, but makes it longer. So you got to divide it to make it equal. So it'd be 22 and a half, 22 and a half, 22 and a half, 22 and a half. So it's uh, 90 divided by 4, because there's 1, 2, 3, 4 angles that would be cut. Another way to cope or miter, or to use angle iron, I guess, to make a frame that I've seen a lot is they just go like that. Just set it like that and weld it up. Only problem is it gives you uneven, but if that's the look you're after or it doesn't matter, that's the simplest way to do it. All right, guys, I think that about wraps it up for this episode of Fabrication 101. On the next episode, I'm going to be building out the frame, and I'll show you some uh, shrinkage details and techniques to deal with distortion on angle iron. Uh, anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see future videos, subscribe and uh, check out my Instagram, Fifth Street Fab, if you haven't. And thank you for watching.